What's that? I get to talk about Peacemaker facts? Let's go! First things first, in the comics, Peacemaker straight up unalived Vigilante. Okay, well, technically it was Dave Winston who had taken on the Vigilante mantle at the time, while the second Vigilante, Adrian Chase, who was a judge whom Dave had worked for as a bailiff, attempted to leave the life of crime fighting behind, but still, technically Peacemaker did do a murder on a hero operating under the guise of Vigilante, so I'm, I'm naturally allowed to get all clickbaity, you dig? This particular murder takes place in Vigilante number 36. But while Peacemaker didn't wind up taking out the most famous alias of Vigilante, he did unmask Judge Adrian Chase on live television in issue 38. This in turn, uh, kind of started a weird race war wherein various citizens were inspired by Vigilante to take out, uh, foreigners, which, um, you know, n not great. Uh. Oh, and hey, did you know that Peacemaker once cosplayed as Boba Fett? <laughs> okay, I'm being a bit cheeky here, but if you turn to this page of Alex Ross's insanely beautiful, stupendous, OMG, my eyes found Jesus comic Kingdom Come, uh, you'll notice Peacemaker outfitted in armor that is very obviously a riff on the Mandalorian armor worn by Mr. Fett, whom I hear likes cruising Mos Espa in his DeLorean, whose story has stumped Star Wars historians deep in debate buffet plate at Benegit. Wait a second. This one's probably the most well-known Peacemaker factoid, but might as well throw it in. Dude didn't start as a DC character. Nope. Originally, he was created for Charlton Comics, which started back in 1945 before eventually losing all its steam and going out of business in 1985. Now, this was two years after most of their superhero characters were acquired by DC. Peacemaker started off in the Fight and Five comic before getting his own short-lived run, facing, um, well, a, a variety of villains. Just look at this bad dude. Look at those eyes. Oh, he's seen things. Peacemaker's not the only notable DC character who originated with Charlton, by the way. Blue Beetle, Captain Atom, Nightshade, uh, actually Judo Master, and of course, Steve Ditko's Randy and Hero, The Question, all started off with that company. And yes, this is why he lives in Charlton County in the HBO series. While Peacemaker would eventually change his tune, the original tagline given to him in Charlton Comics Peacemaker number one was, a man who loves peace so much he is willing to fight for it. Not kill, fight. And not in like a terribly violent, bang, bang, yikes, I've been unalived kind of manner. Despite carrying around a gun and them sweet, sweet 1960s muscles, Peacemaker usually found nonviolent solutions rooted in diplomacy to stop his villain's nefarious plans whenever possible. This shark, though, <gasps> fuck this shark. Right? Eventually, Peacemaker was, of course, folded into DC's main continuity the same way most stray continuities were, through Crisis on Infinite Earths. The Charlton Comics universe, known as Earth-4, was one of those saved and integrated into the New Earth timeline, wherein, of course, he would become, um, a psychopath. Oh, yeah? At least I don't make clickbait for money like you. He's only in a bit of crisis since, you know, minor hero and all that, but he is there to witness the death of Earth 2's Green Arrow, whom he was fighting alongside during the battle against the shadow demons of the antimatter universe when the Earth was pulled in there by the anti monitor. Comics. Uh, this was after he had been under the control of the psycho pirate and. God, jeez. <laughs> Freaking crisis. Uh, let's, it's just, so much, let's just move on. It was December of 1986 when Peacemaker was finally integrated into the DCU continuity through that aforementioned Vigilante comic. Yep, that loser waiter guy who's really good at killing, Peacemaker as we know and, uh, well, love him, uh, got his start in that guy's comic. <laughs> Depressing. Now back to Charlton Comics for a sec. Did you know that Peacemaker was also the inspiration for the comedian in Alan Moore's Watchmen? Uh, you might have actually, that's a pretty well known fact, but I, I, I have to fill 15 spots here. In fact, the initial idea for that landmark series was to have the cast made up of Charlton Comics characters, whom Moore could revamp for his own purposes as he had done with Miracle Man. Which, uh, by the way, very depressing comic. Thanks, Alan. Anyway, the initial proposal to DC was even titled Who Killed the Peacemaker? DC decided they had plenty of use for those characters, and so more wound up making up new ones, and the rest is history. Oddly enough, Peacemaker's initial arc in Vigilante also corresponded with the release of several issues of Watchmen during its initial run in 1987. 
meaning Peacemaker was making a splashy return while the character he inspired was being made famous by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. And just to add to the connection, he was even included in the perhaps ill-advised DC main continuity follow-up to Watchmen Doomsday Clock, albeit really as little more than a cameo. Look at that sketchy little guy. So sketch! There are actually three or four Peacemakers in total, although Christopher Smith is the one you should be associating with the character. Uh, the second Peacemaker, who seems to be an unnamed government operative, was a member of the League Busters, a group formed by the United Nations intent on taking down the unsanctioned Justice League. What are you talking about, man? It's a whole thing, but Peacemaker himself is basically a footnote here. Uh, the third Peacemaker was Mitchell Black, who had been a surgeon who whoopsied a patient during experimental surgery and wound up recruited by the Peacemaker Project, and forcibly shuffled off this mortal coil by Prometheus during the bloodbath that was Infinite Crisis. And then there's another Peacemaker using the Christopher Smith identity who appears in Blue Beetle as a sorta mentor to Jamie Reyes. I say using the identity only because it seems like some people are uncertain if he actually is the real Christopher Smith or whatever, but I'm of the opinion it actually is the Peacemaker who shot up Vigilante all those years ago, mostly because of his memories in Blue Beetle number 20, which even delves into some things we'll get into in a few minutes. Uh, he actually is the one who explains to Reyes that the Beetle Scarab, which transforms him into, well, the Blue Beetle, is alien tech from the Reach. Now that's sort of important here because some eagle-eyed fans have pointed out that the alien tech in Peacemaker could very well be courtesy of the DCEU's version of the Reach, since the butterflies kind of sort of operate in a similar way as the scarabs. So it could be that Peacemaker is leading the way to Jamie Reyes entering the DCEU. With production supposedly starting this year on that film, which, you know, don't hold your breath, uh, it does seem pretty likely that this is the case. Unless you're watching after Peacemaker's first season is finished and none of it worked out this way, in which case, uh... Haha, -ha, LOL, you, f you fell for my dumb joke, <laughs> you silly bean. But back to Chris. Uh, as you might have figured out by now, Peacemaker is not the most mentally stable Deuterino this side of Rorschach. During his initial appearances in the DC Universe, one trait that seemed to have come out of nowhere, in addition to his flagrant disregard for human life, was the fact that he talked to his helmet, which seemed to be talking back to him. It's made fairly obvious that this is all in his head, but it gets weirder. See, the voices turn out to be, or at least Chris believes them to be, the souls of his past victims. They help him, keep him company, and in one very specific case, even degrade and verbally abuse him. Bet you can't guess who that is. <laughs> yep, daddy peacemaker himself, Augie Smith in the HBO show, is pretty bad. I mean, like, dude's a white supremacist supervillain known as the White Dragon, uh, who is himself an actual DC Comics villain, albeit not Christopher Smith's father. In the comics, White Dragon is basically just a terrorist named Billy Heller, uh, which I think he goes by the name Billy Hell at one point because he's edgy, using a vigilante identity to do, well, uh, no good bad boy things. He's eventually recruited to the Suicide Squad and turns on them, of course, siding with the General and Marauder. Uh, real surprising since dude's such a charmer. Anyway, Plastique is super pissed at him for killing her best friend and blasts his helmet open and explodes his brain. But again, that's not Peacemaker's papa in the comics. Nope, Peacemaker's real dad is, uh... Uh... uh well, he's, um... He, he's got a scalp only a bastard could love. And I want my scalps! Anyway, his dad is in his head for a lot of his comic appearances, even causing his helicopter to crash in the final issue of the first Checkmate series. My theory is that Augie Smith will be killed at the end of Peacemaker the show, or maybe even the next episode, considering you know the setup we just got. And in a second season, we'll get Robert Patrick guest starring as a sort of dark passenger type specter, following John Cena around in presumably hilarious fashion. Uh, and finally, while Peacemaker is of course super popular now, he hasn't had the most lucrative comics career. It's not bad per se, as noted, he was in crisis along with like, everyone else, and he played a significant role in everyone's favorite comic series, Checkmate. But at the end of the day, most, I am joking, <laughs> no one likes Checkmate. Uh, but at the end of the day, most people who aren't comic book nerds hadn't heard of the character. However, after his four-issue miniseries in 1988, writer Paul Cooperberg actually pitched an ongoing series to DC, hence that 1988 volume being open-ended. Per Cooperberg's, Cooperberg's, Cooperberg, never said that name out loud until just right now. Cooperberg. 
Yeah. Per Cooperberg's blog, the series would have opened after the disappearance of Christopher Smith at the end of that Checkmate series, and would introduce a new peacemaker, Richard Carter. The series would focus more on the Pax Institute, which was the organization founded by Smith to find peaceful solutions to worldwide problems and to siphon resources into his true calling, a crazed, gun-toting Looney Tune. Anyway, eventually it would turn out the Pax Institute was up to no good, surprise, Chris was alive, and the cybernetics that controlled his helmet were what drove him insane and would eventually drive Carter crazy until in that comic they are fixed, and Smith, having been testing Carter the whole time, turns over the whole operation to his successor, who is now at the brink of being just like Christopher Smith. But that didn't happen, and so thanks to Peacemaker's status as a relatively unknown character, we got the breakout star of James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and a TV show with one of the top 10 greatest opening title sequences of all time. And you know what? That's pretty metal. <laughs>